Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the SUP Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney. Across from me virtually, we have Luke Trevisi. You. We have Lawrence Deloach. Hey. And thanks for coming again, guys. Thanks for another week of fucking sneaker shit. Um, we want to do a couple things up top here that we don't normally do because I uh, want to make sure these gets out early. We have a uh, phone number that you can text or leave a voicemail to. It's 908-299-6910. Um, respectively, also you can follow us all on uh, whatever social media platform you prefer. Uh, Instagram, not that Cheney, uh, Trevisus, uh, LZD325. The podcast itself is Sub Podcast NYC. Uh, we also have a Discord that's our main hub for our listeners. Um, so if you want to go on the description here, um, I usually put the link into the description. So click on that, join up, and you can talk shit with the rest of us. But what's up, guys? How are you? Chilling, bro. Chilling. You guys Chillin', good? Bro. Everything, yeah, man, just good as possible, bro. Excited, you know, for another week of, you know, just interesting things, man. Yeah, interesting things. Couple W's, couple L's between all three of us. So we had a okay weekend, you know, not bad. Yeah, like not, not great, but not bad. Um, so I can officially say now that the shoe is out, I was blessed with a friends and family pair of the Guavas, the Union Fours. Um, I was able to help get Luke um, a pair of the Zoom Ninety Twos. Fuck yeah. And um, Lawrence, you had your own W this weekend, right? Well, yeah, but let's, I mean, let's just start off talking about the unions, man. It sure, was, absolutely. Uh, I think that was, uh, it, it was, like I said before, it was in, uh, a sneaker that many people, when they first saw, they had this, uh, this, this view of it that it was a terrible shoe. Uh, and then we started, you know, seeing official picks and we started seeing the tongue on the sneaker uh, being, uh, you know, full height or what if you want to call it and then people like we said we you know they did kind of a 180 on the shoe yeah uh, i love i love like how things always uh work out on sneakers like this where you have people hate it and then people uh say ah eh, and then people when the release gets closer you just feel the hunger whether it's you know people are looking for a financial come up or people actually do a turn on the shoe but um, you know, unfortunately, you know, I, I don't know if it's, if it's, you know, if I'm washed or if I'm slow, but I, I definitely, I missed out on, uh, I got in the queue and I waited for like, uh, 30 minutes. And then when, you know, obviously when the queue finally opened up, it, you know, the sneakers were sold out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I think, like I said, it was, uh, it was an interesting release because I think we, we, we discussed this, we said it. Yo, people were so fucking hyped off of the Jordan ones that when it came to the fours, they they definitely it, it was a different vibe, you know. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, everybody was not a little bit disappointed when it first came out. Which also brings me a question, Chris. Are you gonna cut the? Are you gonna cut the tab? Immediately, the you, first thing I do. Okay. All right. right. Um. Yeah, I think actually I was one of the f- people that did a full one eighty on it. Um. I, w- I remember hating the they, ha- they didn't cut out on the plastic part right here that we got. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I did mention I hated the tongue, but the second I saw that fold out, that's when the turnaround started. And like most people, yeah, I was a full 180 on these, and I'm very happy that I got the guavas. Um, I, like with you guys, I tried to get the black, the, yeah. the noirs. Um, that was a nightmare. There's so many people on that website at once. Jesus Christ. Well, it. No. It was a lot different in hindsight of how the uh, the Jordan One release went, where you yeah. know this the Jordan One people were you know still getting pairs you know hours after the the official release uh, in, back in 2018. These, I mean, were pretty much done within the first like 20 30 minutes or For sure. 20. And um, and I, you know, once again, the Guava pair being the the exclusive. Remember, this isn't this isn't the end. I mean, the Guavas were a union exclusive. Right. But the uh, Noirs, they come out uh, on uh, September 30th on uh, Jordan and Tier Zero retailers. So um, people do have a second chance. I still, I, I'm going to say, and I think I've said it before, I think the Guavers are a better pair. They just, yeah. they're more unique. There's something about them. I think obviously when you take out the white laces and you put a yellow lace in there, it's kind of, a, it's a good shoe. Uh, secondary market is going to be interesting because right now, I mean, obviously union has not shipped out any pairs. Uh, and they said that it's going to take what around two to three weeks for most people, or or maybe even longer for people to see pairs of the sneaker. Uh, I think when that happens, when, when, you know, union actually ships shoes out, I think obviously they're going to take a a hit right now. They're what, like close to a thousand dollars. 
yeah, yeah generally speaking around a grand um so yeah my order hasn't shipped yet so i'm, I'm assuming it's going to ship tomorrow um i'm going to try to monitor just for the research purposes i'm wearing these i'm cutting that tongue and i'm walking around but i just want to see what these go because it's it's so interesting now that we get to compare these from the original release because we are it's within memory you know what i mean like yeah. like you said like 2018 is not that long ago and we get to follow and track with all this data. It's just so interesting. I mean, I hate that data is so involved in this culture now, but it is fun to kind of watch and compare. Um, and also, it just generally as a rollout, this is one of the better rolled out sneakers uh, in recent years, just like with that tongue reveal. Yeah, the tongue reveal was nice. And a, a lot of our listeners actually got, a, a couple of our listeners actually got, were able to win some pairs too. So yeah. I was actually pretty impressed with the level of, w's that came out of that because i was expecting everybody to get else you know um i was also looking at the apparel just because i copped that uh mechanic the pink mechanic shirt yeah that and one's good. all that stuff is actually pretty high all that pink stuff is up really yeah all that pink shit is doing way better than i thought i thought like the black or even the blue was going to do great but that no the pink stuff is just proving that gender norms are breaking left and right over here just in different categories of life with that bit being like the whole Imagine having that full hookup. Damn, I wish I had that kind of money. But yeah. Oof. Well, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think these, I mean, like I said, they were able, uh, Union, and, and this is something that they vault, that they did with the ones, they, they were able to combat bots uh, from, you know, from being able, because it's a Shopify site. And yeah. Shopify's get fucking botted, you know, crazy. Like, you could just literally, like, just pull your bot up and just eat. But you know when they change the, the the what the the website the the name you know and then they do little things and they have like the captcha and all of that and I think uh, I think obviously when you start putting those pieces in but then obviously what color is an orange? Yeah, yeah, that was that was fun. That was fun. I like yeah. that. And I think when you start having you know three you know, two to three different levels of to combat, you, you can, you know, your bot can't, you know, you, especially if you're not prepared for what's going on, it's just, it's fucking throwing your bot for a loop. So I think that's a, uh, you know, that, that was, uh, it was really good to see that. I mean, like I said, I yeah, just to people. clarify for the listeners at home, if you didn't go for the sneaker, one of the captures, which is like the thing to prove you're not a robot, it asked you what color is an orange and you had to physically type it in to prove you're not and a I robot. I gotta be honest with you for a second because my <laughs> adrenaline was pumping. I did not know the answer. <laughs> my, my man's over here going yellow, yellow, yellow. I'm like, I'm like, yo, I can do this. What color is an orange? What kind of trick question is this? I didn't watch the video. What's what's this going on? He he, uh, he wrote carrot. I wrote, <laughs> <laughs> carrot. Yeah. So like a like a blood orange. <laughs> Um, no, Lawrence, you mentioned that it was a Shopify website. So actually, Luke, if you don't mind breaking it down for a second, Ooh, buddy. You I, have experience working with Shopify sites. Yeah. So I, I used to work for, uh, for a podcast company. And I used to uh, run their, uh, their Shopify website. So I basically spent the whole day looking through their code. Um, and I was able to... Do you have the... I can show you exactly how I did it if your screen share is up. Yeah, let me turn it on for you, buddy. Um, yeah, because I didn't know you could do this. So, so you're, this is you're, what you're you good to go now. This is what you could do if you if you see a, a Shopify website. So I have the original uh, website before it was a before we realized it was a dummy site. Uh, first thing you want to do is just go into the page source. Um, so what you're looking for is like a like a product code basically. So the easiest way to do that is to look for like a size. Usually the half sizes are much easier to find because they have that 0. 0.5. If I was looking for a size nine, I'd have to look through like, you know, uh, 131 out of, you know, 761 pieces of code. Right. So rather than doing that, the easiest way to do that is to just Google search a 9.5 and then I can go over here and it's the idea. Not, not, not Google search the, the find thing, the command. Yeah, it's the control F. find. It's basically it's Chrome I'm using. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I, uh, I look for the exact ID of the, of the item. And then I would put it into, and this, this took a while uh, because you're trying to figure out exactly the language. So I went over here and everybody knows that if you're going to check out of a Spotify website, a uh, Shopify website, you're going and do your cart. So you'd go cart and then I go backslash and I take the ID of the item and I'd copy and paste it in there. And then you have to tell them the quantity that you need. So I would have to put colon one because you're only allowed one pair of shoes. And then when you pull it up, 
Uh, oh, I'm in page source still. But uh, if you pull it up, basically you would you would get a uh, a website that says uh, here. I'll, I'll do it right here. You'd get a website that says sold out, and you'd have like the actual shoe in your box, and it would look like this. So the whole time we were like, okay, well. Uh, Yo, this is the nerdiest shit, Luke, it is that you've ever <laughs> nerdy shit. Um, but basically, the idea was, I, I thought, was if it's going to be this website, then we could go directly to the um, the the checkout, and we wouldn't even have to click anything on the website, you know. And I sent you guys links, and I sent a bunch of people links, and I was like, "Look what I did!" Yeah, and then fucking did nothing. And then everybody, <laughs> yo, there were so you have no idea how many people texted me. They were like, "You fucking son of a bitch!" <laughs> <laughs> you were so confident in this. Yeah, no, I, you know, I, when when you sent it to me, I, I, you know, I was like, I was like, "Oh, this is dope," but in my mind, I was like, "Union." When I remember what they did with the ones, I was like, "They're gonna." They're gonna dummy they, sign. They're gonna, one. yeah. This, you know, it's not gonna be because it was up too long. And you know, you give people that long of a time, like like you said, like bots are gonna like go. Yeah, haywire, bots are gonna so. be able to find it. If I could find it, then they were like, somebody else is gonna like this idiot figured it out, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's that. If you're ever running into a Shopify website for any future releases, uh, maybe do that. Maybe Wait, just go through. Are just uh, I kids website is Shopify, right? Do we know any other ones for sure that are Shopify that we might be able to use this on? Because this is a great yeah. tip for the other oh. fucking nerds. Uh, I think Fair God. I think the, a lot of these places use Shopify. Fair God, I believe, is Shopify. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. I, I can't remember who else, but a lot of places are. Yeah. Yeah, so keep that. Go back, watch that as many times as you can. If you're a yeah. um a audio listener, definitely hop on YouTube right now there's and watch that. Some people, I, I know there's people that definitely have put that up before. Uh, yeah, but I just you know I I had learned about that from just when you're basically when you're testing like I'm basically every time I would put up new merch on the website, I'd be testing the code every time to make sure that it was working. So at a certain point, you just kind of figure out the trends of like what you're supposed to tell the computer you know yeah for sure well, that, so, that was fun that was a fun day that was basically just going back to coding so so we, so we we have we have the unions which a lot of people uh hit on it was you know obviously it was the release to me of the day um we also had another release that not many people hit on uh which was the civilis dunks the civilis mm -hmm. sbs yeah uh, they didn't even see, I, as of today, what's today, uh, August 30th, 30th. Uh, they have they did not see a sneakers release. I, there is rumors that there may be, but, I mean, as we've seen, I mean, most of the time, sneakers pretty much, they do put their SBs on their on their site. They didn't do it with the Travis, but um, um, people are hoping for some type of wider release because, you know, once again, skate shops get them, they're only getting, you know, 20 pairs, you know, if, you know, most skate shops. Um, I said it before. I think they're they're cool. I just don't. I'm just not like I wasn't going crazy for them. Um, I like those a lot. I did. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Why, what, what, you, what? You said the story and shit, right? The design. Yeah, the story. What, like, the, uh, I have memories of a kid like wearing stuff that changed colors. But also, bro, like out of all this crazy shit, I kind of said it last week too. Just like. All these crazy fucking prints, these shoes, these materials. I, I know it changes colors. I'm not like mm. disregarding that, but just having it black. That's why I like the Metacom too. Just like some easy, clean shit mm -hmm. that has yeah. something cool about it. That has a story. To me, mm -hmm. bong. That's it. Hmm. Nice and clean. Yeah. I don't know. Man. There's something about those that just I, it, they feel a little too gimmicky for me. I'm you know? I'm I'm with Luke. Well, now, I mean, and listen, I, and we've 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 seen gimmicks on, upon gimmicks this year with Nike SB, from you know from, from ice cream to bears to you know, but these feel, and like I said, I think what's turning me off, and I, I know this is, I see motherfuckers putting sneakers in the microwave, and I, I get, I'm like, you got to be kidding me, like you're putting a shoe in a microwave just so you can. I think that's the, the ultra. You got to get the shit, views, yeah. Lawrence. You see, back in the day, there wasn't anything about views. But now in my day, it was, <laughs> it was about the love of the sneaker. No, it's about the you views. It's about it. how, many, how many followers you can, you can get from microwaving your sneakers. Look, that's I'm going to do some crazy shit. Back in fact. my day on Nike Talk, we, didn't even, <laughs> we couldn't even like posts. 
All right, guys, let's, let's not go that far. Nike <laughs> Token's been very good to me over over the years that I've I've been on. I'm still I still use it every now and again. All fifteen. Uh, what? Well, I've been on, I've been on Nike Talk, bro, since I was like um, 2003. I Jesus think. Christ! I was oh, we hit, no, we are we, we closing on twenty, bro. We gotta have a big party for tw- oh, Lawrence yeah, twenty we, years on Nike Talk. I remember Nike Talk. They put me on the, uh, to the Michael Jordan uh, jersey, where you can like like you go on the website and you can customize Michael Jordan Bulls jersey. Uh, so I mean, Nike Talk's been a vast uh, thing of information for me. I've purchased sneakers from people there. Like it's 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 cra- it's whatever, man. It's uh, just, I promote shit, you know, there whatever. Actually, well, you know what? Low key, Nike Talk is the reason why we have such a big online presence. Mm-hmm. Really, I uh, you could argue it. I just think because sneaker people in general, like we've kind of covered, but without sa- saying it, we're mm-hmm. like the first people on the internet, sort of creating our own social media because things like Nike Talk, we mm-hmm. want to know we can get special shoes and sh- all that kind of shit. Like yeah. sneakerheads were really like the first online guys. Yeah, man, Nike Talk. Yeah, it was uh, like I said, there was uh, there was Nike Talk. There was In Style Shoes Forum. There mm-hmm. was a lot of shit, man. Like that, I just remember growing up with, and and you know, like I said, people. There was times when you know, I mean, granted, there's a lot of bullshit that goes on there. There's actually some, there's some some good people in there that definitely try to help people out, even to this day, trying to get shit. So, um, there's a lot of complaining, a lot of shit, but you got to just stay out the, the 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 threads with the complaining. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, speaking, speaking of complaining, uh, this week is, uh, I don't, is, um, we talked about it a little bit last week, but Mamba week was, uh, this week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that, that was also something that a lot of people were, uh, looking forward to, uh, because, you know, obviously there were, there were multiple, there were Laker colors. There was the, fi- the, the five, you know, the, the big stage, uh, Kobe's the undefeated there was jerseys that were being released so people were excited because they get to uh try to get some you know memorabilia for uh, you know from their idol you know who's no longer with us unfortunately and it, it turned out to be like a complete shit show to say the least yeah um from from fucking from last Sunday even when we recorded I remember we were talking about the big stage, you know, how, like, it was like, you got on the, the website, you got on sneakers at 2 p.m. and it was just complete garbage. Um, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the, the, the champ, the Laker color, which uh, I think that was like my favorite, uh, same thing. The undefeated pair, the undefeated, uh, a lot of people won on undefeated. I don't know if you guys put a raffle in for undefeated. Did you guys do that? No, I didn't know that. I did, and and they were calling so many people that I was like, "All right, Lawrence, you're gonna fucking win," and did not win uh, the uh, the what if pack. Uh, I did get the eyeball joint, which there you go. Uh, yeah, which the uh, which you know I think it was one of those things where it was kind of like, damn, you know, as a Laker fan, and um, and like you said, you kind of see that if this is gonna be how getting Kobe sneakers are for the next, you know few years unless they flood the market it's going to be like a lot of people are just going to be fucking upset i hope they do i hope they really do flood the market i hope they take the yeezy mentality and like let's just try to give it to everybody um because that's honestly the right thing to do the more we kind of like cover not cover but like you know all these kobe related topics the more it's kind of like you see more people upset even up to the you know people with blue checks are getting mad on twitter about not getting shoes they want you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and that says something because nike wants to have all those blue check people have it they don't really you know not to say don't give a shit about us but like celebrities are going like yo i want i love kobe i need the shoe you know what Mm -hmm. i mean like lawrence who were you telling us before like off mic before we started that was like come on we gotta do something about this uh, I believe it was Nick Young, uh, yeah. form, former teammate of Kobe's and uh, on the Lakers. Uh, he, yeah, he was talking about how, yeah, it's just like, like the real Kobe fans were shut out of this release, these releases. Yeah, and I think you know a lot. Like, I mean, we we all know that. I mean, I'm gonna say this: there's not many Kobe's that that people are wearing, you know, for streetwear. Yeah, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of these are like hooping. Like you like either you like the memorabilia or you just want to fucking play ball in some Kobe. Which I've played ball in a few Kobe's and and, and one of my favorite models, the hooping, just in general, the low cuts, 
uh, you know, the five, six, seven, and eights are just amazing sneakers to hoop in. But um, yeah, it just kind of left a, a sour yeah. taste in people's mouth. Like it was like even Saturday when I went on on the app, I was just like, all right, whatever, just fucking put it in. And then, you know, next thing you know, it just said it just said uh, purchase, and I was like, okay, cool. Like, but it it it, it just it was just a, a shitty week for like Kobe fans, bro. Yeah, I mean, you know, just to compare it to like this situation to other releases that have happened. Uh, so like people who love Ben and Jerry's, they that's a weird thing to for Nike to do. Um, yeah. The Grateful Dead, that's a weird thing for Nike to do. These are like super niche markets. Kobe is not a niche market though. No, that's something that like you know most kids like at least my age. Kobe was like our MJ f- for part of it. Like it started off MJ, and then you went to Kobe after you know he left the, the game. So, like, he transcends sort of, like, these niche markets, these moments. Like, the amount of sneakers he has is, like, the amount of love he has. This is definitely something that should be accessible. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, it should be accessible. I mean, you're saying it may not be a niche market because it's Kobe Bryant. But, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's a, a, this is, like, the first real releases, obviously, since, he, unfortunately, since he passed away in January. Um so you're going to have all different types of people, whether it's the, you know, the resellers or the, you know, the Kobe fans or, you know, the, the guys who just want to hoop in them, like to pay tribute. So I think, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's, it may not be a niche market like Grateful Dead, but, you know, once again, SB has its own uh, wave. Mm-hmm, but that's true. yeah, man, I, I, I think, um, I think it was just, like I said, it was done, you know, and, and, and we don't know, you know, obviously, you know, so a lot of these, the, the production numbers we want to say, obviously, we want to say, oh, fuck, it was due to COVID. But I think this is just Nike just continuing, like, you know, fucking, this is their part of their marketing tool. This is yeah, their like, exclusivity marketing tool to get everybody to sell the, to sell out their shoes, right? Yeah, I mean, they would have sold, I mean, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I think they would have sold out no matter how many they put out because you have so many people that this is, this is people's like, like I said, I mean, I'm, I've been a Lakers fan for, you know, 20, you know, 25 years. Yeah. And, and so I've seen Kobe's entire career. I've been, you know, I've been a huge, you know, obviously I, I've been a Lakers fan before Kobe was even a Laker, but you watch a guy's whole career and, and, and then, you know, for it to be tragically, you know, for him to lose his life tragically, I think, you know, you do want a piece of certain shit, you know, and I, and I think it's going to bring an interesting, it's, it, I heard someone, they were joking about it, but they was like, how the fuck you not expect us to not sell Kobe sneakers? What you want us to stop selling sneakers when Michael Jordan dies? Like, and, and I think yeah. that's, you know, I think, you, so you're going to have people that are, everyone's gunning for a limited amount of sneakers. Yeah. Well, also, like, you know, Mamba Week, like, just because we didn't win any, like, you know, just because there's only been three sneakers this this year, Mamba Week will be a thing, right? Yeah. No, it's Whoa. definitely going to be, like, an unofficial sort of Nike holiday, similar to Air Max Day, I guess. S- similar, but different. Well, right. I think I think it's going to be interesting because I think the I think the, the goal is for them to continue. Like, now we're, we're also supposed to be getting uh, – the sixes are supposed to be retro. So, like, the Grinches – and like the you know all stars like they're supposed to be a big like you know we're supposed to be getting those retro those pro tros, uh, and we're supposed to be getting more fives like the the Bruce Lees. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's like a, a Hall of Fame uh, pack joints in uh, in Japan. Like there's a lot of different sneakers. So I think you know I think if you eventually and I, I hate to say it like this but like you'll get your hands on a pair of Kobe's like you know. Yeah. yeah, I think I think if if we're just pay, like it sucks that we can't like people can't have them now, but I know that in like this is not going to be an impossible thing in the future. Uh-uh. You know? Yeah, Luke, didn't you want the Grinches? You were I talking did. about the Grinches. That, I feel like for Mad Long. That was uh, yeah, that was on my list of top ten. Uh, yeah, of the decade, that was one of my favorites. I would love to get a pair of those, but fucking those are already you know those are already hype shoes when they were coming out. So who knows? Did you guys ever see when one of the times Kobe did late night? Um, I think it was Fallon, and he presented the he had that three D textured one. No, no. 
Anyway, yo, it's just, it's just funny because I, I, you know, throughout this whole thing, I've been thinking of like the great Kobe moments, but off the court, I remember Jimmy Fallon like present. He's like, yo, you know, your sneakers are crazy. You even got this 3D one and he picked it up and he showed it to him and Kobe had never seen it before. So he was just looking at it going like, what the fuck is this thing? Jimmy? And then Fallon's like, wait, have you not even seen these? And he's looking at him like, no, I haven't seen this shit. That's funny. Nah. Yeah, man. I think, uh, yeah, like I said, I think uh, we're going to we're going to get a lot more uh, pro trolls. Obviously, uh, I would love to see the I would love to see certain Kobe's go up on on I would love to see Kobe's go up on Nike ID too. I mean, I don't know if it's a, uh, a oh, limited. That would be great. Oh, I didn't even uh, think about that, Al. That would be fucking sweet. Well, yeah, I mean, I think I think obviously, I mean, Kobe's. You know, I think we are going to get to that point where we are able to uh, ID Kobe's again. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, man, it, it, you know, obviously this week left a really sour taste in people's mouths, Yeah. but I think, uh, I think going forward, I think Nike is going to hear this hopefully and realize that there's too many people that want, like I said, people just want to hoop in them shits, man. They want to play ball and Kobe's. So yeah, for sure. we all know that Nike listens to this show more than any other show because they've been stealing our ideas for months. So there you go. Let's go to <laughs> Nike. Let's see, there we go. let's see what you got for us. Oh, it's so funny. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, just speaking on rough weeks, speaking of basketball, um, you know, there's unfortunately been another instance of uh, police brutality with this Jacob Blake thing. Um, he's not handcuffed to his – you can't even believe you have to say some of this stuff. He's not handcuffed to his bed anymore, which is great. Um, but in protest, the NBA uh, kind of backed away for a second. The players were like, yo, we're going to sit this one out. Um, I mean – some cool things that came out of this, if, if you can spin it like this, is, you know, MJ came out of the woodwork and tried to help, uh, you know, doctor the situation between the players and the league. Um, stores closed to sort of uh, give their uh, condolences to the situation. I don't even know if that's the right way to say it. Sorry, I'm just a little awkward just because uh, this stuff is kind of hard to talk about. Damn, I, y'all should have just let the black guy talk about the black issue. I kind of uh, should have. Oh, uh, Chris, I got to stop letting you talk about anything serious. Um <laughs> so bad at it yeah, yeah no, take it away al yeah no i think uh it was you know we what happened in kenosha uh with uh, jacob blake is going on you know all parts of this country with uh black men black women uh that is uh it's it's disgusting and it's it's hurtful because for you to just see someone you know thank god this man did not lose his life but to see his life his quality of life be impacted going forward. You know, when you take seven shots and you're back at, at point blank range and, and, you know, now they're talking like he's paralyzed and it, it just continues to go on in this country where you, you don't feel safe or, you, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a car. I remember driving my mom somewhere and, you know, police officer being behind me and I've, I've never been arrested. I've never, you know, I, I don't have a record but just feeling uneasy. And, you know, and my mom saw me one time and I remember she was like, what's going on? Why are you? And I was like, cause there's a cop behind me. I just, you know, and this was years ago. This was, you know, eight years ago, nine years ago, but that fear and that, that mentality should not, you, we should not have to feel, fear that, feel that way. Yeah. And, um, and I think, like I said, watching the, uh, the NBA is such a, uh, the, because the, the NBA is so interesting to me because it's a sport that is played by so many minorities and it's, it's a, it's a, you know, it's something every, you know, I, I know me growing up uh, in Brooklyn, I, I just remember we were all, we all had NBA dreams because that was quote unquote our, our way out of the hood. Uh, you know, that's one way to put it. And to see, uh, the players even debating on coming back to, to finish out the season. And you had players such as Kyrie Irving, uh, you know, you know, who said, I don't think we should do this because this is a distraction. And, and what we need to be focused on is, you know, getting justice and, you know, and making a change. Uh, and, you know, some people laughed at him. Some people said, I get it. But at the end of the day, the, the players went back and I guess seeing something that's hurtful and that 
you know, we it's it's so upsetting to see someone, you know, be you, when you watch videos of white guys wrestling police officers or you see videos of, you know, white guys killing going into a black church and, and then, you know, the, the the police officer, the FBI offering the kid Burger King or a meal and you see a, another black kid and the and he's murdered by a police or a vigilante fake police officer and the first thing that is always spoken was well he may have had marijuana in his system he may have you know this and that and i think it's upsetting it's very upsetting so yeah i mean yeah. even the uh, fucking that kid kyle what's his fucking face the 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 gun kid i'll just call him yeah. gun kid whatever um they were showing pictures of him like cleaning graffiti off you know trying to give him like this white way of I, out media outlets and it's like yo come on son we can't be doing this shit anymore like this is getting ridiculous it's a little too yeah. bold-faced at this point you know yes it, it's it's very bold-faced so uh watching the nba players uh it was watching because it, this is never obviously been done but the sports world kind of went on pause on wednesday mm -hmm. and and you know and and to see like you know like the Milwaukee Bucks, who you know, this happened. Jacob Blake happened in in the state that they play, and you know, and then when you have you know the NBA is direct. Like one of the players on on the Bucks, Sterling Brown, there's a video of him being you know manhandled by police officers uh, on video over uh, parking in a handicap spot at 2 a.m. Like they tased them, they they beat him up, you know, they did all this shit, and. So it hits home when you see, and the you know when you see the a team president and Masai your jury uh, uh, from the Toronto Raptors, and he's being pushed by a police or, or uh, retired or, or undercover or whatever he was that worked in Golden State when they played in the finals, like the just because you're you're wealthy or just because you you have some type of power does not absolve you of dealing with these issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so i'm i was uh, i was really i i wish you know obviously you know i can't say that i wish it went on longer or they canceled the season because you know once again these these dudes still they have a job too and and i think it comes down to they need to be able to support their family so you know a guy like lebron set but but you know the, the 12th man on the roster he you know he still kind of lives he may live paycheck to paycheck yeah yeah i mean uh WNBA uh mls uh baseball i mean adidas pushed uh the release back for the weekend mm -hmm. you know uh stores closing like bodega kith uh even uh international sneakers and stuff cut and close like you know and in more i know off the top of my head i can't remember but it is nice to see the world kind of come together i mean even just sns alone it was just like that's dope that mm -hmm. people outside of the u.s are giving a shit so yeah. i mean that's cool well, yeah, I think we see that, and I and I also, you know, I, I hate to, the, you know, I hate to say it this way, but I think we a lot of these stores saw what happened just two two and a half months ago when, you know, all like a lot of these stores were being looted, you know, and yeah. and, and I think yeah. stores are like, hey, shit, this can't happen again, and you know, in, in two months we don't need another. So I think like these these businesses they want to be on the right side. They they're trying to figure things out. And we've seen, like I said, even with the NBA, where you know the, the arenas are now going to be polling uh, places places to vote on election day. I think mm -hmm. everyone everyone has to realize that yeah, we have to figure out how to make a change and how to. It's just not about like donating your money anymore. It's about figuring out how to use your resources and and coming together. Which you know, I, you know, you mentioned Kyrie earlier. I think Kyrie gets needs an apology from some people because a lot of people gave him flack for his early views of what to do with this shit. Yeah. And now seeing how things have sort of panned out and people how how things have you know just generally how like this timeline has gone, I think he was more right than wrong. And a lot of people were trying to paint him as like this lazy guy who just didn't want to finish out the season and had like a great excuse that couldn't be uh, rebutted. But I mean, here we are. And you look at things that Kyrie has done throughout, like since he said it till now, one of the more active uh, and not sort of uh, like screenshot, like look what I did type of dudes. Um, yeah, man, I feel like Kyrie, I mean, just it, plain, simple. Like the guy is not trying to make this uh, about him or it's not like a story. You can see that now. 
I think a lot yeah. of people just – he deserves an apology. That's it. I, I think well, Ky- Kyrie was very interesting because Kyrie, he was hurt anyway. Yeah. So it wasn't like he was going to play in the bubble. So I think people looked at it as, all right, this guy who is – now if his team was – in contention to win a championship if Kyrie had a healthy Kevin Durant, if he had all these guys on his team, would he say we shouldn't play in the bubble? So I think that was people's views. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, look, looking at it, I mean, you know, you, you kind of wonder, but I, I still, you know, I, I think, I think the players, they have an opportunity to still make such a, a huge statement, even by playing. Right. Hmm. So I, I, you know, I think you know. Once again, I mean, the season. I mean, the playoffs were were pretty much in the second round. Second round began today. Uh, you know, we're maybe we have another you know month and you know possibly another month and a half in the bubble, if that. So um, I think there, there's definitely some things that the you know obviously that, that they're going to continue to work on to make things right. Yes, I agree. I mean, I hope, you know, we you can't hope. see the future, but out of all the organizations, just to keep it on NBA for a second, I mean, they're doing it correctly. Yeah. Uh, other organizations, hopefully they'll follow. I understand it's like, you know, you can't all get like a bubble situation everywhere you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you also can't like uh, meet the demands of the players as much as they can. Um, I don't know how the inner workings of all of these go, but I think NBA is doing it right. So, I mean, just to go back on that, like for sure, that's the, that's the way yeah. to fucking do it. I mean, the fact that they're playing, uh, like, they they were able, like, you know, say what you want about Kyrie. It's true. It's true that, like, th- there's there's an argument now to be made that, like, they shouldn't be playing. But, like, the fact that they had, they were playing and then they were able to take it away because of, uh, because of what was happening, uh, it made kind of a more powerful statement. Too, yeah, definitely. You know? uh, it's also cool that, like, you know, you have the, the courts all say Black Lives Matter across them. And they're actually standing by, like they're actually standing with what they're what they're talking about, which is very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not like early Nike Kaepernick situation, or not Nike, excuse me. Uh, NFL. And, NFL, NFL, yeah, it's not like early yeah. NFL shit where they were kind of like dancing around, seeing like, oh, what's good? Oh, you know? oh, 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 oh <laughs> we're gonna lose money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <sighs> yeah it's a it's an interesting time. I mean, then you know, like I said, I mean, this was a. Uh, this week was very, uh, it was very um, tough in terms of whether it was Kobe, you know, uh, uh, Kenosha. Uh, yeah. Just, but then, you know, on Friday night, you know, my I'm talking to my friends and, and then we get a text about Chadwick Boseman and, and, and that, man, that, you know, that it hit me too, man. It hit me you really know, hard. It's all these left field ones, dude. It's like all yeah. the ones we didn't know. It's like... It didn't even set in. It's not even actually really set in with me. I'm not going to lie. Just because, like, me being a Marvel fan and then me, like, it's this is going to be a weird thing. Just walk with me through here. It's just, like, you think about, like, the, re- the releases of a movie that's coming up, how much uh, Black Panther is getting the shine. He never really got the shine he deserves back in the day. Um, yeah. Now he, he's, like, a, you know, because of the world we live in now and the way the society is progressing, Black Panther is, like, this huge fucking thing. It's, like, to see that sort of taken away from under us, like who that guy, like Chadwick, what he represented, all the things that were like surrounding him. I mean, just to find out he had cancer through the fucking. So that means he had cancer during the filming of that movie. Yeah, he had. Yeah. He was all these the movies, bro. Movie. My man was probably getting chemo. All this, like, you think about all this shit. You're like, bro, this is nuts. And then like it just happened a couple of days ago. So then you're like looking to the future. It's like, well, how can you do anything without this guy? Right. Fucking wild, man. And then, um, yeah, he was getting shit on for the way he looked, like in those last couple photos he had, wearing a Jackie Robinson hat. And then all of a sudden, you turn around and realize what the situation was. It's just, it's just hard, bro. All these left fields it's coming out of nowhere. You were already stuck in the house. It's just like rough is one way to put it, man. But it's uh, getting a yeah, rough part. Has been kicking our asses, man. Jesus Christ. Uh, it was, yeah, that was a rough one. Uh, yeah, I think yeah with. Uh, with Chadwick, it was just, it was just, uh, it was, it was tough, you know. Like, I think, like, the one thing that I can, like, at least, like, know is that, like, one of the statements said that he was, like, he died with his, like, wife in his home. Yeah, yeah. You know, like he, you know, he had a good life. Say what you will. He did have a good, like, he was able to experience a lot of things, and he was able to do a lot of the stuff that he wanted to do, and you know, and he did really a great job 
like portraying Black Panther too. So it's just, ah, God damn, you know? Yeah, man. Rough. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, you know, just talented, just, uh, you know, it just hurts, man. It, uh, it really hurts, you know, that this is, um, but, you know, it's just every, it feels like every day there's something new. Yeah. And it's like, and it, no, you can go, go, go. I was going to say, and it's just, you know, I mean, I know this is a, a, a street weird podcast. So, you know, sometimes, you know, when we, when we don't get a release, sometimes that we want, we, we, um, you know, we're like, fuck, man. And we're, you know, you get sad or you're like, like, damn, you know, the competitive side and you want it a certain thing, but, you know, you have to realize that it's life and, and things are, are deeper than that. And, you know, you have your health, you have your family, you have your loved ones. And, um, and I just, I, like I said, I just, man, I, you watch how talented that guy was, man. And, you know, whether it was Black Panther 42, uh, Five Bloods, like just, you know, all that stuff. And like you said, for someone to, to give their all, uh, yeah, with, you know, being sick like that yep. and, and keeping it under wraps. Just literally, bro. The, do you know how many people he, that knew that and still kept it under wraps or how many people didn't know that you think about both ends, but like for none of us to know mm-hmm. for, for no one to sell that information to like TMZ, like a grime bag. Like yeah. a lot of people did that dude. Right. So that's actually cool to think about too. Like, you know, out of all the fucking bullshit that's happening this year, you get to think of thoughts like that. Like, damn, people still can, like, you know, Uh do the right thing. Yep. Yeah, man. Um, Yeah, I know it's – damn, I feel like uh, that's that's so deep. I I don't know, you know – I don't know how we, uh, well, we, let's, you know, let's, <laughs> it's, a, it's just, it's like fucking Jesus Christ. It, yeah. Even, it's like one after another. Yeah, bro. And it, it, and some people like that don't, there's some people in the world that like, don't like Marvel, maybe never watched the guy. They don't like basketball. They don't watch Kobe, but you, even if you disassociate yourself as much as you can, like he's just an NBA player. He's just an actor. It's still so many of these out of left fields out of nowhere, fucking horrible shits happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just really wears on you, even if you don't give a shit. It's like fucking Christ, dude. Yeah, bro. <sighs> but um, you know, show goes on. Show goes on. Um, do you guys want to take a viewer question? Yeah. You guys want to change pace a little? Yeah, let's try to lighten the mood up here with a uh, wait Discord question. Yeah, we have a little Discord question. Once again, you can uh, join our Discord. The link will be in the description of this video. As always. Uh, as always. Uh, we, you know, we have a nice little community in here. We got, sometimes we get questions that, I, you know, that we think uh, might be good to address on the podcast. So I, I have one here from Timeless Elements. He said, yeah, guys, first time here on the Discord. Love the podcast. Thank you for that. Uh, did anyone hear the interview with John Lumber? co-founder of StockX on Complex Sneaker Podcast. He talked about how trading cards will be the next big thing for resellers and investors. I wanted to know how you guys feel, feel about that. So I actually did listen to that episode because I thought he was going to address the breach, right. which he did. I'm not going to say he sidestepped anything, but he kind of was like, yeah, we fucked up, or at least that's what I got out of it. He didn't really like give an explanation of the how or like the steps that were taken to like fix the stuff. He was basically like, yeah, we fucked up, but you know, we fixed it, whatever. So he was trying to spin it like any other corporate guy does where it's just like, you know, we learned from the process and now we're stronger, that type of bullshit. But what he was saying was interesting because um, he was saying it was the lack of uh, information, like the lack of uh, connectivity being, you know, the internet, lack of the internet made trading cards such a weird thing because they were hard to like, centralized they were hard to like reference check and all this other shit but now with the res- like the, with the internet it's resurging and it's apparently going to be the next major resale market which uh i mean my experience with trading cards i don't know about you guys but i was more on like the pokemon Oh like nerd side like sure. luke fucking doing that coding shit earlier that's i was with <laughs> pokemon cards you already the know day. i'm like that too yeah um it kind of makes sense though when you think about it I mean, now we're at a point where there's so much vintage stuff coming back into light, like, you know, just Jordan Doc type shit, where now it's like you get nostalgic, you open the closet, see what we got. 
No, I was talking. I was texting Chris uh, earlier in the week because I was telling him that I wanted to get a starter jacket, and I was telling him, asking him if the vintage store by him was open. I've been trying to look for a nice, like a Vancouver Grizzlies, like that teal. Ooh, ooh, I yeah. want a starter jacket so bad because I never could afford one when I was a kid. Were you, know? you were were you even born when the Grizzlies were uh, <laughs> were in Vancouver? Yeah, when they were like friend, like when the franchise was started. Yeah. Yeah, I was all like Goo Goo Gaga Grizzlies. So I've been a fan of the Grizzlies since then. <laughs> I mean, I and mean, Grizzlies came out what like ninety five. Like, ninety five. I was ninety ninety three. I was born in ninety three. Right. My man was two, trying to growl like a bear. Sure. He was like, what the love? <laughs> that was me trying to be a grizzly. Uh, but yeah, all that vintage stuff. We're we're all into it now. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, what do you what do you got now? I'm actually kind of interested to hear what your take on this is. I don't know if you've collected cards as a kid. I mean, we spoken I, about it. Yeah, I mean, dude, that's I mean, collecting cards is how I actually became a Lakers fan. Um, really? I got an autographed basketball card from. Uh, Nick Van Exel, who was the point guard of the Lakers, uh, he, you know, in the mid nineties. And, and at that, I mean, once again, I was a kid, I grew up in Brooklyn, you know, you were either Michael Jordan fan or you were a Knicks fan. Yeah. And because I got this basketball, this autograph card that I, you know, I would send out letters. I had a, a sports book called Beckett's and I would, uh, I would write letters to the players and I would say, Hey, big fan. You know, I would just send out like a, you know, like a blanket, like a statement letter. Hey fan, we love an autograph car. I'm like 10 years old. For the, for the younger kids listening, this is the handwritten DM. Okay. Go. It's the, yeah. yeah. It's a hand. <laughs> listen, uh -huh. I mean, listen, whatever. So, uh, so I Did get, you use so, a quill for that too. Uh, I fucking use the pigeon. <laughs> I had a pigeon fly the fucking letter to, the team, I, I just need you to paint me a picture. I, this is a new concept to me. Well, he, tied, he tied a note to a snail and said, please be gone. They, there you go. <laughs> so, so it was the Beckett's, you would, you know, they had the, the address of the, each team in the back of the book and uh, Beckett's, you know, it's, it feels you don't know what a Beckett's is. It's a price guy. So, you know, you get a, you get a card and you're like, man, how much is this worth? You know, come out like every month and you would see like, how, oh man, this car's worth $75. So OG I, StockX. Yeah, it was it was paper form, and so I would I would write these uh, teams, and I sent probably like fifty letters. My mom was so pissed; she had to send out fifty letters for me. And, <laughs> and one player replied and played for the Lakers. So I mean, I have basketball cards. For, I have so many ca baseball cards, basketball cards uh, that I never that I was never able to sell uh, because my mom told me, you know, you, I she said I paid for this as a kid, and you need to keep these I'm, I'm hoarding baseball cards for for you know for 25 years at this point yeah but um I probably i got some heat <laughs> i mean i guess i mean i do have some shit you know what i mean but um to to, to answer your question uh listener yeah i mean t uh, baseball cards are, are, are trading cards are always they took a dive but i think with the tops projects i think that's obviously i think that's a big thing where we saw baseball cards or cards in general being resold for a lot of money. Yeah. Now people are more onto it. So it doesn't, it's the, the cards that are coming out aren't as, you know, lucrative, but in the first couple of waves, man, people were cashing out from what I heard about tops project. So. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to, it's going to be very interesting to see if this moves because apparently they're going to start trying to cater the platform to also incorporate cards. So they're going to have like a card section. I'm referring to StockX. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be interesting. Louis, <laughs> is shaking his head. <laughs> yeah, because Stock, StockX needs to just focus on, I mean, first of all, they need to stop fucking taking seven weeks to pay people their money. And then they're trying to add, they keep, they keep adding shit. It's like, yeah. hey, we had a security breach last week, but... We've also added the ability for you to sell video game systems <laughs> this week. Oh, wait a second. You guys aren't getting paid for eight weeks. Oh, we also are trying to add <laughs> baseball cards. You're going to love, like, it's, it's a, it's, come on, StockX. Like, you got to figure this shit out before fix, you just. Fix what doesn't work first before you start adding shit. There you go. Uh, fix it. I think Isaiah is, ordered a pair of shoes, like, a couple weeks ago, and he's been, like, he's, he still has not gotten those shoes uh yeah he's another one on the list that just got is just not happy about this either <laughs> well i i sold uh some shit and yeah. it literally took me like three weeks to get my money yeah, like normally i mean 
normally we're talking we're talking a day too yeah you know if you if you you know mail some shit if you send it out on monday I, you know back in the days you were getting paid by like thursday friday you know so yeah. three weeks four weeks i think people so people like for StockX, they think they need to kind of you know, figure out how not to get people's security information, their credit cards and shit compromised. It's true. Uh, I think as far as like trading cards go, like my brother's a big um, Magic the Gathering guy. He's so a he's big nerd. Big, yeah, he's a bigger nerd than me, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, confirmed. He, confirmed. He has like, he, he, he has like a big, he has like, boxes of like un like sealed products from magic the gathering and he's able to make like a like he has a decent side hustle selling like older sets for like a decent amount of money mm -hmm. uh that i feel like that's another one that's been like i like a lot of these markets like these trading card markets have been like sustained f over the years i don't really see like i don't think there's going to be a big shift honestly from like i don't think anybody's going to go oh I really like sneak like oh the sneakers game has been good to me. Let me move on to trading, you know, trading cards. It just doesn't make any sense to me, honestly. Well, it, my thing is that it's interesting that StockX is finding it interesting because the value in what they uh or the value that they're finding in sneakers is that people want the appearance. Right. You can't wear a card. No, but you can hang it up in your house and flex on it. You the, you could, but it's, mm. StockX's main thing is getting the people with the most amount of money in the sneaker that's hottest in the moment right. so they can be seen in it. Mm -hmm. right. That's my only thing. Like, I got out of the cards. I got out of all that shit. Like, I collected the bad shit. Even, like, stamps I tried. I gave a swing at when I was a kid. Fucking... And but I'm a nerd, come on, man. Yeah, no, but it's, but part of it was just like, all right, so I had all this shit in my closet. Wanna, my name's Chris. Do you guys want to see my stamp collection? I did that at least once. I can't Don't deny. I br <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, you eventually just get a closet full of shit. And then you're like, all right, so now it just stays here. That's my whole thing with it. So I don't know how much of the overlap is going to actually uh, be with like the StockX current customers with the, you know, card nerds. Yeah. But we can't wear them, so I'm kind of I'm off. Like I'll go check my shit next time I'm home to see if there's anything in there that might be worth something. But mm -hmm. that's about it. Yeah. So uh, what was that kid's name? Shut him out one more time. Uh, timeless element on timeless Discord. element, my guy. Thank you very much for the question. Um, and I think we might be able to kind of wrap this one up here now, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Um. We can just kind of, I mean, there's some stuff that we skipped this week, but we'll get to them next week. Uh, we can just kind of dismount this with a hype plus heat. You guys into it? I hate when you do that. What? When you're like, there's some shit we skipped this week. Yo, man, we covered everything we need to cover for the exactly. listeners. Exactly. Listen, listeners don't Fair. know what we skipped. Listeners they don't, don't, they know don't know our know. list. They don't know our list. list. We, it's it's true. true. We covered everything we needed to cover this week. We're amazing at this. Damn, we, I'm dry snitching ourselves. Everything, and we did it for, <laughs> for an hour, and it was great. <laughs> That's um, it. I'll I'll start with the um hypo seat here. Let me get my little fucking share action going. Um, but no, this one. Uh, so we, you know, we we've, we've kind of we haven't really picked a lane of like what kind of stuff we share. I mostly we've been doing kind of basics, and I want to keep that train going. And I don't think the Shadow Six Thousand from Saucony gets enough love. Um, yeah, from Saw. Con yeah, it's not my Boston coming out. No, but Saw that's Con a good. Bro. That's a good brand for a Boston accent. I mean, they're in Boston. He's wearing a pair of Saucony's. Going a to the socks, game. bro. Wearing, socks, bro. Wearing my socks to the Sox game, bro. <laughs> it's not even really Boston accent. I'm just being a douche, uh, bro. But no, I love these. I love these shoes. Um, I think out of like Saucony's like uh, core, uh, like basic shit, this is probably the best. I mean, you got the five thousand and you got the the uh, original Shadow. But out of those three, I like this one the best. And of course, going back to like the affordability, it's always available. Always got some nice color up. So I'm gonna go with this guy right here. That's a good choice. I like that a lot. Uh, I'm gonna go into mine. Do you yeah. have my link up? Oh, I do have your link up. I can share yours. Oh, oh hell yeah. So uh, it's you know it's it's summer right now, but it's coming to an end soon. You know, we've had a little bit of a fluctuation in weather here in New York. Uh, so I figured now that we're getting into the fall, just start going into a little boot season. And I picked the classic mocks from, uh, from Red Wing. Uh, personally, I like the Navy pair quite a lot. Uh, these pretty much go with everything and they're great for, uh, for pretty much all the weather and all the craziness that New York has to offer. Uh, and they, they look classy. 
uh, always size down a little bit with Red Wings because they run a little big. That's my only uh, note. And you um, have to run them over with a truck several times to make them flexible. To make them really, like, flexible, yeah. But I'm, let me tell you, they're a clean shoe. Uh, and then, I guess me, I'm going to go with some Gucci uh, slide sandals. Gucci yo, my, <laughs> Lawrence always be breaking out the money shit, yo. He's got the money shoes. I respect it, though. I respect it. Gucci slides? Is that what you said? Yeah, Gucci. I just fucked your Go bitch. Flops. <laughs> uh, um, oh, let me just get a visual up here. People know what these are, but. I mean, but, yeah. You know, what can't you say about them? They're amazing. If my internet ever wants to. Oh, shared a little early here. If I ever wanted to. You can do it. Let's, Come on. I'll just close. Go to the Google search. It. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Book Pro, I believe. Yeah, there they are. Ooh, Gucci slides, like baby. Yes. What it do, uh, baby. Uh -huh. That's like when you... I, <laughs> there's actually a lot of dudes on my block that uh, I always see these in the bodega. All dudes just like slipping out. They're just like, yeah, something light. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Dipping out, just going to grab a bag of chips like in their Gucci slides. I'm like, all right, bro, I see you. Uh -huh. I see you, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it, guys. That's it. That's it. Um, yeah, like I said at the top, though, I mean, at not that Cheney, at Trevizas, at LZD325, follow us on Instagram. I mean, the Discord's the main thing. Come join the Discord, hang out. Um, yeah, we got merch. Go to we Becky's merch, website, baby. remember to be happy.com slash sub shop. Um, we got the box logo there. We got the logo flip. L, we want to hit us with the uh, jump man you got on? He's got the um, Supreme Jordan flip. And then there's the, the old logo flip with all the brands on there. And then uh, we're going to have more coming. But yeah, go there now. Come into the Discord and hang up. And you should it. practice that, uh, that page source thing that I showed you guys on yes. Becky's website. You <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like, it's, she... it's all available. Like, it's not that hard. But, like, you know, <laughs> you it'll be like a nice little Becky's practice. Site. Practice on Becky's site. Um, I think she uses Squarespace. But guys, give it a shot. Give it a shot anyway. A shot. Uh, it should work uh, in theory. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, any final thoughts other than this? Nah, man. Just just be safe, man. Yeah, guys. Stay positive. Stay healthy. Um, and just, you know, that's, that's really it. That's the only message we got for you. So oh, yeah. uh, see you next week and have a good one. Peace. Peace.